things different back then. First thing Penn did, he founded Philadelphia, where people don't expect to be given anything. They earn what they get, punching the clock, working the shifts, and toughing it out. They're tough. He's tough. Gotta believe she's tough. You plan on coming here and walking away a champion, you better be tough too. Toughness is, is one of the most important qualities that someone can have. Keep your head down and keep moving forward and keep grinding. Having no fear. To always do the hard right over the easy wrong. To win a national championship, your team's gotta be tough. The party has to die. The king is still the king. Gale will look to go back to back. William Penn started this city. Toughness keeps it going. A seven score, it's over! And is the key to winning the NCAA Lacrosse Championship. The final chapter of this 2019 lacrosse season is a Philadelphia story. Defending champion Yale meets ACC champion Virginia. The Elis looking to go back to back. They've done it with an unstoppable offense in this tournament. Virginia's run has been defined by improbable escapes and a little bit of that fairy tale magic. Virginia's needed overtime in both the quarters and the semifinals to get here. Yale in the semifinals knocked off the number one seed in Penn State. And we say good afternoon on this Memorial Day in East Rock alongside former national today. champion Quint Kesnick. Another national champion, Paul Carcaterra, is down on the field. Today we conclude what has been the most exciting NCAA tournament in recent memory. Welcome to the shot clock era. The shot clock has given this great game back to the players, and they have delivered. And who benefits? You at home, the fans here, and all of us. Yale, the defending champions, they have been the gold standard in the Ivy this decade, and they rebel against every bookish Ivy League stereotype. They're intense, they're physical, they're tough, and they're brash. Lacrosse is a game of physical confrontations, and that is the heart of this Bulldog team. Strong. They garner extra face-offs with TD Erlin, 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 and that fuels their possession advantage. They stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with you on defense and protect the paint. Even with the ball in their stick, they're looking to target opponents. And that toughness shows up late in games. They play heavy metal lacrosse. And Yale has averaged almost 20 goals per game in this tournament. Virginia's formula, a little more risque. They've had to rally in each of their last two wins. And Kark, the cardiac Cavs, that has been a running theme all season in Charlottesville. Well, Anish, Yale might be the defending champ, but the challenger, the Virginia Cavaliers, will fight you to the very last whistle. I had a chance to sit down with Ryan Conrad, the Virginia captain, and asked him what the secret sauce to this team is. He said it's the never give up mentality. The Cavaliers' confidence late in game started in March against Syracuse and has continued through the postseason. 7-1 and one in one goal games, 5-0 in oh in overtime, and they have the players to do it in the clutch. Matt Moore, he iced it in the quarterfinals against Maryland as a scorer, but it's his passing that's been a major story this season, winning assists Saturday in the semifinal win over Duke. Then there's Doc Aiken, Philly native. He's back home. He smashed every single midfield goal scoring record in Virginia history with brute force and a hammer of a shot. And don't forget Ryan Conrad. He has a piece of every Virginia player in his game. He's a chameleon. Yes, he can score, but it's his play in the middle of the field that makes him the most versatile player in all of college lacrosse. Conrad is playing some of his best lacrosse of his career right now. 11 goals in the NCAA tournament. More than half of his goals have come in the last five games of the season. Those three along with Ian Laviano and Michael Krause, a big part of Virginia's success. Now let's send it to Lincoln Financial Field public address announcer Mark Schuerman.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Lincoln Financial Field for today's Division I Men's Lacrosse National Championship between the Yale Bulldogs and the Virginia Cavaliers. As we celebrate Memorial Day, please rise and remove your hats to honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad. Today, the colors are presented by the Philadelphia Metro Recruiting Company Color Guard. And now, please join Master Sergeant Richard Vasquez from the United States Air Force Heritage of America Band in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Vasquez. On this Memorial Day, we do want to remember and acknowledge those that gave their lives in service so we can enjoy the freedoms and liberties here in our great country. Anish Raf, Quint Keshnick, Paul Carcaterra, it's the national championship, Yale and Virginia. Eli's trying to stay at the top, Virginia trying to get back there. And for the Cavaliers to do that, they have to find a way to somehow limit the best face-off man in the game, T.D. Erlin. He's taken a lot of draws the last two games, and this is a tough turnaround, but he is a game-changer like no other in this sport. Face-offs are unique to lacrosse, to start all quarters and after goals, and he wins 76% of them. Okay, he's whistle ready, super quick. He controls the clamp with great technique, power and balance from his days as a high school wrestler. The exit and scoops. Biggest news of the offseason was his transfer from Albany. And you look at his history in the NCAA tournament this year versus what has been a pretty easy regular season for him. A young man who did take a lot of heat on social media after announcing his transfer from Albany. Gale beat Albany in the semifinals last year. He then joins the Bulldogs and now a win away from a national championship. Andy Shea, second straight championship game appearance, looking to lead Yale to its second title in school history as we usher in the beginning of a new decade next year and the end of this one here in 2019. Lars Tiffany, third year head coach at Virginia. He's brought a rebirth to a proud program in Charlottesville. And his biggest point to us yesterday he said swing first. This has been a team that has come from behind eight times this year. Miraculous recoveries, but he wants his team to deliver the first punch. Yale has been delivering the knockout punch early in this tournament. They scored 10 first quarter goals in the semifinal win against Penn State. Seven first quarter goals in the quarters against Penn. Nine first quarter goals in round one against Georgetown. Fueled by faceoff wins staccato passing on offense and a tempo 
that opponents can't handle in the first 10 minutes of a game. 23 and white, the freshman, Petey Lasala. We saw ice cold nerves from him in the semis against Duke. He'll have to go against TD Erland today at the faceoff X. Down the stretch, the last two games, he's played like a first team All American. Uh, this is a new galaxy for him. He's got to show improvement over the game. Virginia's advantage, though, the wingers, Jared Connors and Ryan Conrad in white to the best in the game. Officials today, Doug Donovan, Hans Wittelsberger, and Joe C. Slack. Back foot, back Move off the back line, back White. Hand off the midline. Yep. Get, back back in. yep. Get your helmet out, White. Get your helmet out, White. Get it out. Stay off him. TD Erlen wins the opening face off of this championship game. Erlin, a Tawarton Award finalist. That is the highest individual honor in college lacrosse. And the champs on the attack first, John Danagelis. Senior captain, a solo captain. Over to Matt Gaudet, the most outstanding player of the NCAA tournament a season ago. Now here comes Jack Ty, quarterfinal hero, whips it wide. In goal for Virginia, the sophomore, Alex Rode. He played the best game of his career in the semis against Duke, 19 saves. A Yale offense that likes to strike early. Thought that, thought about it. Now Joey Sessa, the five foot five senior, against Matt Jama. Over to the freshman, Matt Brandau. His shot saved, it will reset the shot clock. The big new rule this year was the advent of an 80-second shot clock. That starts on possession. To reset the shot clock, the ball has to hit the goal or the goalie or go in. Here comes Jackson Moore. Behind the cage to Sessa. Great lateral quickness for Dwayne Blue. Has his man Jama hung up. Sessa feeding inside, and that one turned away by Rode. Two early saves by the sophomore. Possession to Yale on a shot that goes out of bounds. Possession awarded to the team closest to the ball where it went out. Ty feeding the wing to Morrill. Penalty coming against Virginia. And Yale will have an extra man opportunity. Left side of your screen, high and vicious. Opportunity for Yale, Brendan Rudy, 46 and blue, a sniper from Saskatoon, Canada, on the left wing. He has 10 men up goals this year, 19 since the beginning of last year. Here is Lucas Kotler. Almost half of Kotler's points have come in the NCAA tournament. Gaudet, now it comes to Brandau, coming off a seven goal game in the semis. Jack Ty cranks and scores! The senior from Long Island with the first salvo of this championship game. Turn on the tape from a year ago, gentlemen. Jack Ty in this exact same stage against Duke. He crushed it in the first quarter with outside shooting. Ball rotation, no one picks him up. A little giddy up for 18 and blue. See, Virginia builds their, their house defensively in that five-man box formation. But the front porch is a little too close to the goal. And Ty allowed to step in and let it rip. Erlin and LaSala back to the face-off X. 
two minutes in, Virginia has yet to touch the ball. That's a communication issue from goalie to defenders. You're barking at them how far out you want them to cover a particular shooter. Erlen able to win the face off again. Absorbs contact, gets it out to Brandau. Yale on that opening possession took four shots. It's a high volume team. There's Brandau. Now Lucas Cutler. A Yale advantage in this game, depth of midfield scoring. The second midfield, Kotler, Tevlin, and Krop has been very productive. Tevlin, skip pass, Kotler using the shake. Ready? Trying to work against Teo Dahl. Tevlin against John Fox, the short stick D midi for Virginia. Ball hits the turf. And Virginia has it. That's one of the strengths of the Cavaliers. So good on the ground balls. And let's see if Virginia pushes. Jama in transition. Yale able to get back. And the Cavaliers will settle on offense for their first possession. Matt Moore, the first 40-40 player in school history. 40 goals, 40 assists. And just two points away from tying the single season points record at Virginia. And he's guarded by Will Weitzel. Jack Starr, who was outstanding in the championship last year. A sophomore in the cage for Yale. Moore against Weitzel. Now picked up by the shorty, and Matt Moore ties it for Virginia. Cavaliers defense vastly improved in the second half of the season. A terrific double team. They smother the help man, and next thing you know, they come up with a loose ball. It's Cade. Sawstead from Texas, the freshman. At the other end, watch how this pick changes the matchup. There's a switch, advantage, Matt Moore. Matt Moore, high school soccer player, now has 85 points, one away from Doug Knight's single season record. You look at the face right now, this is the third face of the game, and in the first two, I think P.D. LaSalle held his own, tied Erlin up on the first one. The second one won the clamp. A lot relies on the wing play for the guys in white here. They have to make it a 3v3 game. Virginia head coach Lars Tiffany told us they want to wear T.D. Erlin out. Now LaSalle able to win that face off for Virginia, and Ryan Conrad, who took a shot to the leg, able to pick up the ground ball. There's Moore again working on Weitzel. Moore cradling with that right hand. Extra pass by Virginia and LaSala that time. The faceoff man running offense. Got a yard sale. Helicopter check. Rolls over the midline. You can go over and back in the first 20 seconds of the shot clock. Yale comes away with it. A lot of contact. No flags. Brandau has it off the scramble. Brandau accelerating now, holds up. And Yale will wait for its offensive Here we personnel. go. Here we go. Feels like a heavyweight bout. Ty thought about it. Feeding the crease, saved by Rowan, and a shot by Brandau. Into the air to the cross of Jared Connors, who dumps it back to Rowan. And Virginia will set up the clear. 20 seconds to get it across. They do easily. Corey Harris. Only one career goal for him. And now it's Ian Labiano. He had the game winner in overtime in the semis. Also had the game tying goal at the end of regulation in that contest. You don't love this game. You are completely nuts. That last series had everything. End-to-end -end action, ground balls, hits, goaltending, bring it. Doc Sagan. Bounce shot is wide. Virginia nearest the ball, where it went out, so they'll keep it. Yale's offense is based on ball movement. Virginia's offense is based on personnel. Outstanding Dodgers, ball carriers, guys like Moore, 
Kraus and Aitken, and very few teams can match up man for man. Kraus against Weitzel again. Kraus gets free, this is wide. Are you a little surprised Yale is not putting its best defender, Chris Fake, on more? And Fake's covering the lefty Kraus. Very few teams have two. Aiken with a nice split dodge. First team All-American, Doc Aiken. From nearby Villanova, Pennsylvania. Now, using the sub game. That was Peel. Aiken recovers, new 82nd shot clock. Actually, no, the shot clock did not reset. Thought it hit the goal, and that caught Aiken off guard as well. So now Yale's got it. 8.50 to go in this opening quarter. Riding is a strong theme in this game. That is four checking. It's the full court press in the cross, and nobody this season does it better than Virginia. Yale's pretty tenacious with their 10-man ride as well. Jared Connors, the long pole, had some cramps in the semis. He's okay today. Connors also a first-team All-American, 28 in white. And uh, Virginia will do this. They'll keep out players on offense that you wouldn't think would stay out on offense to go five on five like they are with Jared Connors right now. It makes you uncomfortable as a defense. Mikey Herring now, he had three assists in the semis. He can play attack in midfield, works against the short stick Tevlin. Herring finds Matt Moore and Virginia with a 2-1 lead. And Moore has now tied the single season points record at Virginia. Philly's finest. Cavalier Nation loves it. This kid has been amazing in his sophomore campaign. Move over, Doug Knight, a Virginia legend. There's a new sheriff in town in terms of point production in the season. His name is Matt Moore. And he's got the Cavaliers up on the defending chance, 2-1 in Philly. It's a Memorial Day baseball triple header on ESPN. Marlins Nationals right now, then it's Red Sox Indians, and finally the National League's best team, the Dodgers, will host the Mets. Matt Moore had the game-winning goal in overtime in the quarters, had the game-winning assist in overtime in the semis. The first two goals today for Virginia, and they've got a 2-1 lead, 7.50 to go. In the first quarter, the Cavaliers have won their last two in overtime. There's Moore finding Ian Laviano. That tied the game at the end of regulation. And then Moore to Laviano in double overtime. Virginia in its first championship since 2011. Yale went to work right away against the number one seed, Penn State. The Nittany Lions had won 13 in a row. Their only loss all season was to Yale. Their only two losses all season happened to be to Yale. A 10-1 blitz resulted in a 21-17 win. Yale played in semifinal number two. Virginia got the benefit of some extra rest. Virginia as the higher seed in the home white. Yale in the road blues. Eli's the defending champions looking for their second title in program history. They won it last year. Virginia has won it five times the last in 2011, and so far the faceoff X has not been a lopsided advantage for Yale. Petey LaSala, the freshman Fogo, denied at the cage. And the ground ball picked up by Laviano, who dumps it back to Moore, who's got the first two tallies for UVA. Anish. Petey LaSalle, you could call him a Fogo. He's not, man. We've seen him this season. He can shoot. He can defend. He is an absolute scrapper and a grinder of a midfielder. Great high school football player as well. This kid does not stop. Fogo, face off, get off. As Aiken gets a shot off, but sends it 
about 15 rows up in the stands. Here comes Moore against Whitesell. Moore's been winning this matchup early. Moore, that time, the matchup won by Whitesell, a turnover. And Aiden Hines will push for Yale. Feed to the middle, Eschbach. It trickles to Jackson Morrill, who shoots off the mark. And Brandau has the backup. Brandau working against Logan Greco. No one on Virginia has started more games than 44 and White. Jack Ty now, a hat trick in the championship a season ago. When Yale's playing great offense, the ball's humming. Three seconds in a stick and then they move it on. Most dangerous from the right. wings with midfield Dodgers. Like this guy, John Danagelis. Changing direction, here comes the slide. Now picked up by Connors on the switch. And the turnover, that's four for Yale. Virginia has to get it across midfield before that shot clock hits 60. Yale's in a little bit of a ride. Virginia sees that every single day in practice. They do it themselves, the 10-man ride or the full court press. Ryan Conrad, senior captain, a two-way midi most of his career, got hurt last year and missed most of the season. He is a human tempest. Now Ryan Lamb, down the alley, shoots wide. We were talking on the call ride in. This game sometimes decided by unsung heroes, guys who come off the grid. Like a Jack Starr a season ago. Adam DeMillo from Maryland two years ago. Here comes Moore against Weitzel again. Over to Lamb. Now Michael Kraus, who's been quiet so far. Good matchup. As the short stick matchup with the shot blocked, popped into the air. Jeff Connor, the freshman, picks it up. Holds on to it, shot clock at 10. Here's Lamb. He's got to go. Five seconds. Lamb splitting the defense. Runs into an ambush. And a shot clock violation on Virginia. Look at that hustle on the ride. They love to ride these attackmen. They ride with their heart. Laviano and Kraus. Pursuit, great angle play, and they force their second turnover on a clear. That is just 100% an effort play. They give up no real estate without a fight. You look at this team, it's part of their DNA. Most teams clear at a clip about 85%. Opponents against Virginia, 71%. It's everything in terms of playing attack for this team. If you can't ride, you're not getting on the field. And when you face a team that has a TD Irwin, those rides and those failed clears generate extra possessions. Jack Starr covers this one up. Now again, Yale will try to ride or, or avoid the ride, and Jack Oakey able to do so. The freshman who drinks olive oil to keep his weight up. Here's Morrill now, he'll retreat. Dog dead. Oh, wow. Demolished and devoured, and the flag is down, and now tension starting to escalate. Nice job by the officials breaking that up. Matt Gaudet, the junior, from Hamilton, Ontario. Terrific toe drag, and then he gets lit up from behind. Easy call. Toe drag. 
boom, Conrad makes him pay. Quite honestly, not a bad penalty because if Gaudet lets that shot go from eight yards, it's gonna be turn and rake. Yale's only goal of this game came on an extra man opportunity. It was Jack Ty, the EMO goal. He's got it now. Over to Brandau and Morrill will orchestrate the offense for Mets. Ty up top. Plays it to the wing and cut it. Watch out for 46. There he is, Rooney. Right, right, left, right. Moral probing. Ty. One more pass. Cutler with a bouncer that skips wide. Two seconds left on the Yale extra man. Man down defense in a five man house formation. Right. They share left. the crease. Left. Back to even strength. Virginia's defense dramatically improved over the course of the season. It, it really is quite amazing the work they've done. A Virginia team that started one and two. 15 and one since. Ty plays it to the middle. Shoots high. Jack Ty had the game winner in overtime in Yale's quarterfinal win against Penn. Here's Morrill, second all-time in points at Yale. Behind only last year's to wartime winner, Ben Reeves. Shot clock at 10. Morrill, the slide came, and he turns it over. Yes. Winning the matchups. Winning the perimeter matchups. Yale's ball movement, not as crisp as we've seen. Six Great. turnovers now for Yale. Spacing and coverage away from the ball carrier. Ten-man ride by Yale. And Aiken got it across and knocked away, recovers. Aiken shaded by Robert Mooney. Both these teams love to disrupt, create friction. No free space. A Yale team that had scored 26 first quarter goals in this tournament. Only has one so far. Here comes Peel. Now Moore, who's got the two Virginia goals. And a positive matchup. Has the short stick. Moore looking to feed inside for Labiano. He can't finish it. Knocked out of bounds by Virginia and Xander Dixon. And Yale has it with 104 to go in the quarter. There's the ride again by Virginia. Will Renz over to Luke Eschbach. He had a nice semifinal with a couple of games, with a couple of goals. It's like Virginia sitting in his own defense here. Final 35 seconds of the first quarter. Shot clock is off. Yale can hold for one. Dan and Jealous, wing dive. Dan and Jealous again, drew the slide over to Tevlin. Crop now against Greco. Crop to the cage. And he stepped in the crease. Virginia ball with a couple of seconds left. The freshman Sostead dumps it down field. And quarter number one in this 2019 national championship comes to an end. The defending champions got on the board first. One of the heroes of their title game last year, Jack Ty, with the extra man, got Yale on the board. But then the standout sophomore, Matt Moore, responded with a couple of goals for Virginia. Cavaliers up after 15 minutes. Two to one, our score, Virginia on top as we head to the second quarter here at the link down here on the field. Chris Cotter alongside Paul Carcaterra and Paul 
The ride's been working for Virginia. Alex Road made three saves early, two to one lead. You look at the score, two to one, you think slower game, not a chance. Both teams are on pace for 40 shots apiece. The second quarter will open up. Trevor Baptiste won more face-offs than any other player in college lacrosse history. He stays at Denver. Trevor, what are you seeing at the face-off X? You know, I think I think Petey LaSalle is doing a great job battling with TD Ireland. You know, he's he's scrapping with him. He's making it really tough for him to not get clean face-off wins, and that's huge. And like you mentioned before, they're doing a great job in the ride where they're gaining an edge back. They're getting more possessions through that because they know TD is a great, great competitor. We're going to have more from Trevor throughout the game. Also at the half, Paul Rabel's going to join Paul and I so stick around, everybody. we got a great lacrosse game here in each queue. Cotter standing next to Trevor Baptiste. He, he was not the most jacked guy in the room no, for once. Cotter, he looks like Clark Kent today. What Avenger pair would, would that duo be? <laughs> Baptiste Hulk and Cotter. And Thanos. Good to go, Hans. Okay, come on down, man. Justin nice Schwenk time. will take the second quarter faceoff for Virginia. White helmet. White helmet. TD Erland still on there for That's Yale. Right. We mentioned earlier... Erlin took 39 faceoffs on Saturday. Out, he took 40 the, the week before in the quarters. And Virginia's won three of five at the X. I go back to what Andy Shea told us before the quarterfinal game against Penn. He said at times this year, Yale has relied too much on TD Erlin having to win 70, 75%. He feels this team is good enough even if TD Erlin goes 50% at the X. Don't use your face-off advantage as a crutch. Today, it looks like they're going to have to win with even or subpar time of possession. The thing that stood out to me in East in that first quarter, the failed clears, yeah. giving Virginia second chance opportunities. Yale was just four for seven clearing the ball. Shot is a little too high. Virginia's midfielders are getting to good spots. And Yale has not done a great job on the more matchup. Michael Krause against Chris Fake, Yale's best defender and one of the best in Division I. Herring on the doorstep. That's a save. It comes back to Krause. Krause has not been much of a goal scorer the last two games, but does have eight assists in those two contests. Another bad matchup for Yale defensively. Look for an early double team. Or against Danagelis. Moore will isolate the short stick. Stay right. Keep moving inside. Hines. Bill, Bill, catch him. Catch him. Right, right. Moore from goal line extended. Streaking two in the cage, now plays it back. Right. Over to Kraus. Good, He's got the short stick matchup now. Drop, drop. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Kraus, right hand free, didn't get much on it. More there for the backup. Kraus, two and right. Match. A left hander. Left. Shot, right. Virginia has missed its last nine shots. Aiken, too high. Now 0 for 10. 17 on the shot clock. Moore, tornadoes against Weitzel. Swirls around. Shot clock at five. Moore to Laviano, denied by the sophomore star. Should have gone behind the back there. He's losing his angle. He caught it, had the momentum. For a more in-depth look at today's game, you can check out our U.S. Air Force alternate angles feed that's streaming live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. We have goalie cam, sky cam, and every replay. Handsome Dan cam? Yeah, we need to show a little more handsome Dan. The Yale mascot. Maybe the best bulldog mascot. Forget maybe. The best bulldog mascot in all of college sports. Here comes Jackson Morrill. Snaking around. Morrill looking to feed the crease. Road is well out of the cage. It comes to Brandau, empty net, and Yale capitalizes with Matt Gaudet.
that's a big time break for Yale. You watch Alex Road on tape, especially early in the season, some decisions he makes around the crease come back to bite him. Makes a check on the ball. Your rule there is you're either gonna make the play or you don't try it. That proved to be the wrong decision. I'll tell you what, guys, that rarely happens for Virginia. There were four white shirts to the one blue. They normally dominate ground balls and for that moment in time, you take your goalie out, you got to come up with the rock, because Matt Gaudette will make you pay last year on this stage. Tournament's most outstanding player. He's automatic from in tight. He had 10 goals during championship weekend. Looks like the sword in the darkness. He could be a member of the Night's Watch. Or as Karp likes to say, the Undertaker. He established that. He likes the Undertaker better. <laughs> Virginia making Yale work on these face-offs, and now Yale has to go to work on the clear. Beautiful, that's a textbook handle. Back into your defensive zone, change fields using your goal, use the entire width of the field. That is gorgeous. Face-offs even at three apiece. Zone defense from Virginia. Christian Krop, sophomore out of Florida. Good look on the inside by Morrow. It'll stay with Yale. 32 seconds on the shot clock. Now Sessa will dodge from the wing against Dave Smith. Morrow against the freshman Cade Sausted. Sausted from Highland Park, Texas. Shot clock at 15. Kotler shaded by Will Rock. Comes back to Morrill, probing against that zone. Looking to feed inside. Scooped up this time by Road. Our next 30 for 30 film is titled Qualified. It tells the story of Janet Guthrie, the first woman to qualify for the Indy 500 and the Daytona 500. It's Tuesday at 8 Eastern. The ability to be multiple on defense. Virginia mixing and matching man to man and their 3 3 zone effectively. Clark, oftentimes, this Monday game, because of fatigue, is a lower scoring contest. We're seeing it early on here. 100%. I mean, these teams are accustomed in conference play in April, playing one game per week. Now, the biggest stage of them all, two games in 48 hours. That's why Monday, flip a coin, man. Left, right truck. Here comes Kraus. Shoots and scores. Michael Kraus gives Virginia a 3-2 lead. Anish, do you remember on the car ride over? We were talking about this matchup, and I told you Michael Kraus will be an X Factor. Why? Virginia has two stud playmaking, dodging attackmen in Matt Moore and Michael Kraus. Yale can probably only guard one of them. And when you put a short stick on Michael Kraus, he is salivating and going to get to the rack. He uses leverage, strong low shooting angle ability, and he cashes home. Cavaliers creating matchups. Yale slow to double team. His father, Steve, a standout face-off man at Virginia in the late 70s and early 80s. His uncle, Andy, was a three-time All-American at UVA. And the last time Yale and Virginia played, 1991, Andy Krause, Michael's uncle, played in that game. Michael plays smash mouth lacrosse. He'll barrel into you. Chance here for Yale. T.D. Erling's shot is off the mark. Erwin won the faceoff. He's got six goals, a threat to score. If you're a pole or a fogo for Yale, understand that Virginia defensively on fast breaks, they hold, which means they won't leave the point man, inviting that player to shoot. Jack Ty, right hand free, too high.
Here's Sessa dancing along the crease. Sessa is denied. A loose ball shoveled by Todd. New 80 second clock for Yale. It's a beautiful wing dodge by Sessa. Super quick. I think Rowe made the stop between the legs. Moral now from X. Shot, shot. Sawstead comes out to greet him. Sessa against the short stick Jama. Virginia's top team midi. Sessa hits the turf. Ball's loose in front. Tevlin scoops it up. His pass on bounce picked off by Fox. Fox spinning through the defense. John Fox thundering downfield. Fox through the D. Whiffs. Laviano, a former hockey player, tried to slap shot there, but Starr has it. Now the ride by Virginia. And Yale. Able to bring it across midfield. How about Jack Starr? He yells goalie. Second consecutive year. He's, he's picking Memorial Day to play his best game of the season. The young man who wants to perhaps travel the Hollywood Road. Working out a screenplay. Outstanding in the classroom. Andy Shea telling us a couple of weeks ago that hoping playoff Jack resurfaces this year. So good in the championship last year. Shot fake and a save that time by Road. Both goalies have played well early. Six saves now for Road after matching a career high with 19 in the semis. Alex Road lost his job early in the season after a loss to High Point. In an overtime win against Syracuse, came off the bench. He's been the guy ever since, but for the last seven, eight games, he really had to earn his spot in practice every week. Krause with a back shot and a score. Two for Krause, and Virginia has a 4-2 lead. Early offense for Virginia before Yale's defense is fully set up. There's some substitutions going on, which leads to more space for offensive players to operate. Kraus peels from the inside, and how about that? Use the earth, the high bouncer. Virginia, super sharp here in Philadelphia. CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships is brought to you by Applebee's new loaded fajitas. And this scene in Foxborough last year when Yale celebrated its first championship in school history. They knocked off an ACC team in Duke. Now facing Virginia out of the ACC and handsome Dan. He has endeared himself to all of us. The Yale mascot, Quint Clark and I, we're at a Yale practice earlier in the season before a game against Cornell. At the end of practice, a scene just like this played out. There was a bucket full of lacrosse balls. Dan grabbed the bucket, ran toward midfield, dumped the bucket. He didn't want anything to do with the lacrosse balls. He just wanted the bucket. Best in show. <laughs> That's what the people want. Handsome Dan. Look at that vertical jump. If you don't hear from Kark for long stretches, it's because he's feeding handsome Dan puppy treats. That's good. That's good, Blue. I need that. I'm good on Blue. Just the hands off, folks. Close up the plastic. Petey LaSala back at the faceoff X for Virginia against T.D. Erlin. Yale has won four of seven. Make it five of eight. Erlin, one of five finalists for the Heisman of Lacrosse, the Tawartan. It's never gone to a face-off man. Gotcha. Yell's offense, they, they've just not been themselves for a variety of reasons. We have to give Virginia credit. Man-to-man -man defense on the perimeter has been outstanding. 
The coverage inside in the slot, really good. And then they've mixed defenses, man-to-man -man and zone. Here comes Brenda, coming off the seven-goal game. His shot saved by Rode. And Rode clamps down on the loose ball rebound. Seven saves for the sophomore, who was the number one goalie coming out of high school a year ago. In, in. Get in. Hi. NCAA Hi. coverage continues Thursday, May 30th. It's the Women's College World Series starting at noon Eastern. For more information on all NCAA championships, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Doc Aiken against the short stick. Oakley, Aiken, full head of steam. Turns back. Left hand rip. Native son, Doc Aiken, has given Virginia a three-goal lead. Docs is the closer, but offensively, if you want to make it rain against Yale, team that averages 15 goals a game, your goaltender better have his A game. Alex Rode has been amazing in this first half, shutting the door. And then Docs Aiken, the leading point producer from the midfield in Virginia history, and he's only a junior, goes down the alley, Plants that foot aggressively, gets back to the middle of the field, and you see the angle there. He's shooting at a whole lot of white. Speed and power. That was a cannon blast by Aiken, a former Division I football recruit who had football interest from the likes of Penn State and Notre Dame and Army. Pull out, pull out, pull out. Petey LaSalla not shying away from this matchup. LaSalla to the yeah. key! No stage too big for the freshman. shield off T.D. Irwin, and then handling the ball while running full speed. We talked about it earlier. Don't label him the typical Fogo because he can stay on and make things happen. An excellent high school running back, strong lower body. I mean, he's got calves and quads, powerful. He was the lowest ranked member of Virginia's class at the beginning of the season. Where do you think he stands now? He's been the most significant freshman on this team. He's become the primary face-off guy. And by the way, that Virginia freshman class, number one in the country. But the coaches and the players told us, oh, for a freshman, there's no sense of, hey, this is a semifinal, this is a championship game. He's cold-blooded in that regard. Lars Tiffany slept in a car because he couldn't find a hotel near one of LaSala's showcase events when he went to recruit LaSala. That's how he got this guy. And he has come through on the biggest stage of the season. He won the last seven, eight face-offs in the semis to key the comeback. Pre-game, Lars Tiffany playing with that wooden stick. That has a lot of sentimental value. Lars, his father, Brad Tiffany, a U.S. Marine who served in the Korean War, passed away at the end of January. And Brad Tiffany had a stick made for Lars. Now, those wooden sticks made by Al Jacques, the stick maker in central New York, they take a long time to make. And by the time it was ready, Brad Tiffany had passed away. But that stick was presented to Lars at his dad's funeral. And he brings it to a lot of the games. He's brought it with him throughout this tournament. And all this fairy tale magic, all this sprinkling of magic dust that's been on this Virginia program, Lars is a guy who embraces the spiritual aspect of this sport. And that stick on that sideline, that's the last gift from father to son. And you think of how Virginia's won so many of these games during this postseason run. You know, the sentimental part of you wonders, right? We, we ask coach. 
do, do you think there's something special here? And he says, absolutely, I do. The stick is the magic. It's the tie-in. It's been everywhere, on the buses, at press conferences, in the locker room, on the field. Lars Tiffany grew up on a buffalo farm in central New York, he said. His dad taught him to be wired, always working, always grinding. The message that he remembered for today, swing first. A Virginia team built on comebacks has come out strong. Dan Agelis working on Greco. Did not get anything on the shot. It trickles to Gaudet. Ty tries to slip one in. He can't. Another save by Rode as Sostead picks up the ground ball. It's out of character for Yale's offense. A group that averages nearly 54 shots a game. Known for peppering defenses with multiple passes on every possession. With great ball reversal. A road has made some good saves, but to the credit of Virginia's defense, Yale has not had many great shots, Quint, as Lars Tiffany calls a timeout. Well, I, I think they're initiators. If you're Andy Shea, you need your, and you see some frustration, you need your initiators to do a better job to get Virginia's defense on the carousel, so to speak, in terms of double teams. Skin in the game today presented by Old Spice. The face-off dot was supposed to be a big advantage for Yale. Virginia has held its own with Petey LaSala and Justin Schwenk. And wingers Ryan Conrad, 22 in white, and Jared Connors, 28 in white, both first-team All-Americans. So if this can become a three-man face-off, the power shifts to Virginia because they have better wingers than Yale. At this stage in the game, though, and he's really up to T.E. Earl, the champ, the king of the hill, to make significant adjustments, use his experience to learn from this rough start of this ball game. The Kark, a big topic during Yale's semifinal win was how much gas would T.D. Erlin have left for today after taking 39 faceoffs, and many of them were long battles at the X. One lasted 50 plus seconds. Look, back to back weeks, over 40 faceoffs. But the beauty of the playoffs prior to this weekend was he had a week to rest. Not so much today. After Saturday's performance, late in that second half, you just felt like he might be wearing down a little bit. Gerard Arceri from Penn State was admirable, fighting with Erlen at the X, but the battle today is a little different. Petey LaSala, for a freshman, I've been watching this kid coming in and out of huddles. It's amazing how calm and cool he is. I mean, you feel like you need to check this kid's pulse. This moment is not too big for this freshman, not a chance. Remember Quint in the semis, late in that game, both teams huddling on the sideline. LaSala waiting at the faceoff X. Where is everybody? I'm ready to go. Fogos don't take part in huddles. X. More against Weitzel. Virginia on a 4-0 run. 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 Moore had the first two goals. It's been the big guns for run. UVA. Moore, run. Kraus, Aiken. Right, 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 right. Run. Get out. Left, left. Yale's defense has switched on so many picks, right. and that's created great matchups for Virginia. Left, shot. Looking for the cutter, it's not there. On a peel. Yale, unable to hang on to it. It bounces back and staying in bounds. Jack Peel, the sophomore walk on. Virginia feels he's got a bright future. Hasn't played a whole lot this season. You watch him practice, his speed jumps out at you. 49 can go. Great acceleration, strong left hand dominance, and now he'll come off for some fresh legs. 2.40 to go in the first half. It's been dominated by the ACC regular season and conference tournament champions. Okay, if you're Yale's defense, this is not good. You have to be ready to double team and support this matchup. Aiken against the short stick. Through the slide, over to Moore. And that one missed it too high. Kraus will attack fake. Kraus gets the step, left hand free, but off the mark. 
Thank you, Yale's best defender. Top freshman in college lacrosse a season ago. It was Ian Laviano, not much of a dodging threat. And didn't have much on that shot as Starr makes the save. Outlets to Hines. And Yale able to clear. Two minutes to go, first half. Semi-final win against Penn State. Yale had 10 first quarter goals, 12 first half goals. Only two today in the final. And one of those was an extra man goal. Ninety seconds to go in the half. Tie. He's got one of the two tallies for Yale. Dana Jealous, the senior captain. Over to Joey Sessa. Randall, back to the perimeter and Dana Jealous. 25 to shoot. Good defense by Virginia. Tied from the wing. Drives to the middle. Feeds inside. More denied. Alex Rode, 9 of 11. He's been a roadblock. And Virginia can't hold for one shot. They still have to get it across the midfield line. A terrific ground ball play by big number 11 in white. Fox over to Aiken. Virginia clears, and now the Cavaliers can hold for one. Ryan Conrad, 11 goals in this tournament. And a timeout by Lars Tiffany. 30 seconds to go. Opening half, Virginia after giving up the first goal of the game, has scored six of the last seven. ESPN and the ACC will bring you the ACC Network this August, where the conference's 15 championship-winning programs will call home. Visit GetACCN.com to learn more. Could be a chance that after today it says 16 champions. 2011, the last time Virginia Won the national title, Steel Stanwick, sensational in that tournament run. And that was unexpected in It was. 2010, they had the better team, lost in the semis to Duke. And then the program began a gradual decline. They didn't get back to championship weekend until this year. Lars Tiffany's third year. He has put in a new culture, and, and team building and chemistry has been a big part of it. Fitting that we're in Philadelphia, which draws its name from the Greek roots filio, to love, Adelphos, brother, hence the city of brotherly love. That chemistry, if you ask Lars Tiffany, a big reason his team has banded together with all these late comebacks, the belief in each other, as Ryan Conrad told us yesterday. And Virginia lacrosse has a chance to complete a double that we've only seen three times. That's when men's basketball and men's lacrosse wins a championship in the same year, and they've done it in the same dramatic fashion. Remember Virginia, the Elite Eight miracle. Ty Jerome gets away with a double dribble. Diakite hits the shot to send it into OT against Purdue. They win that game in the Final Four. Kyle Guy fouled on a three-point shot against Auburn. Virginia wins that game in the championship. It was DeAndre Hunter, a three to tie it against Texas Tech. They win in overtime. And how about lacrosse? Shot hits the crossbar. It's counted as a goal, part of a comeback. And then Matt Moore in overtime against Maryland in the quarters. You got to catch some breaks along the way. Against Duke, a double OT winner. Ian Laviano scoring the game tying and game winning goals. They trail Duke by two with less than a minute to go. But they were they were dead to rights against Maryland, down five late in that ball game. They were dead to rights against Duke. Duke had the ball with 85 seconds. Given a lifeline. They've just run with it. Final 20 seconds of this opening half. Nothing cardiac about the first half of Virginia today. Here comes Kraus, 10 seconds. Kraus snaking around. Kraus to the middle, shoots, and it's a save by Starr. Seconds tick away, 2.7 to go. Thought it might hit the frame. Take arms now inside, defensively. Conrad feeding the crease, and it gets away. The ball out of bounds, and the first half comes to an end. 
a Yale team that had been unstoppable on offense in the first three rounds of this tournament, shackled by Virginia. The Hoos with a 6-2 lead. Kark. Coach, what's been the plan on the face-offs today? Uh, we're very fortunate to have very, two talented face-off men in Petey LaSalle and Justin Schwank. And uh, with, with the two games in three days, you know, we want to rotate them through. And bottom line, we've been doing a decent job of being able to win some of those clamps and get the ball out and uh, let our wings get involved. But boy, Petey and Justin have stepped up well so far. Yale's offense can be scary at times. They average 15 goals per game. You've held them to two in this first half. How? It's, um, we've mixed up some man and threw in a little zone. Um, they're, they're smart coaches. They'll figure that out. It's really getting their gloves, you know. Our checks are tying up their hands and disrupting their ball flow because they can move that ball and sling the shot. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Alex Rode in goal for Virginia. An impenetrable fortress. He has saved 8 of 10 in this opening half. Yale, only one goal in the last 28 minutes. Did the champs and handsome Dan have a second half rally? We're going to find out, but halftime's coming up after this break. That includes the top 10 plays of the season. About ready for the start of the third quarter in the 2019 National Championship. Virginia with a 6 2 lead on Yale, and the Cavaliers have done it with a stifling defense. And Ishraf alongside Quint Kesnick, Paul Carcaterra is downstairs. We know Virginia can score, but what they've done to Yale's offense in the first half is stunning. The Elis have two goals. One was with the man up. The second was a waste management goal. Six on six, they've got zero against Virginia. It really is striking in the way they've been uh, disrupt disruptive on the ball defensively and then had great structure behind it. We're gonna roll this board. If you freeze it right here, watch this defender. Jared Connors now, how he sets up this double team. As soon as the ball carrier rolls back, you roll it forward. Watch this pinch double. And Yale's without space. And the ball gets stuck in sticks and forces the turnover. They've also done a good job of swarming ball carriers. Freeze it right here. Now this is opportunity for Yale because you've got three Virginia defenders on one ball carrier. But off ball, you see a nice packed in Triangle formation in front of the net, and that ball again goes out of bounds. This is the best I've seen Virginia play man to man defense. They've mixed in some zone, and Yale just looks not like themselves on O. Two goals in the first half, a season low for Yale. A team that came into this game averaging almost 20 goals per game in this NCAA tournament. Second half face off, Petey LaSala for Virginia. Against T.D. Erlin, the best in the country for Yale. Erlin wins the first face-off of the second half, and that's the reason you don't count out Yale. Down four. Dana Jealous off that face-off win, and Yale strikes less than 30 seconds into the second half. About as good as it gets if you're a Yale fan. Face off scrap. TD carries in and sees the trailer. The five on four delayed fast break. Dana jealous with the high heat. It's a big senior from Long Island. He's outstanding in transition. Lone captain for Yale, Dana jealous. But TD with the dish, we saw it Saturday. He made a beautiful pass late in that game against Penn State to create a Yale goal. And this time, back at the X, can Yale get the momentum and make it take it? Get the hands off the clock. A former high school quarterback, a two-way midfielder. He had a hat trick in the quarters. Face-off violation on Virginia. Erlin assisted on that last goal. Six on six, Yale does not have a goal today. Jackson Morrill against the freshman, Cade Sostad, who's done a terrific job on Yale's second all-time leading score. Junior! 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 
This reminds me defensively of the performance Virginia had against Notre Dame in the ACC championship. Here comes Ty down the alley. Over to Brandau. Gaudette steps into one, and just like that, it's 6-4. This is a team that averages 15 goals per game. They have the nation's top face-off guy. How long can you hold them down? Bending, bending, bending. Will Virginia's defense break? And Matt Gaudette has shown range. I spoke to Andy Shea prior to the game. We talked about his range. Always been a finisher, but now he can stretch a defense. Starts with a wing dodge. They kick it behind the net. And then Gaudette with the step down. That, if you're watching Yale lacrosse all season long, that's what you're used to watching. And if you're wondering what that collar around his neck is, that's a concussion collar. Two goals in the first 30 minutes for Yale. Two goals in a minute and nine seconds here in the third. And Erwin wins the faceoff. And this is what makes Yale so dangerous. Well, he had it. But secondary pressure, Virginia now. Conrad! Sudden change for UVA. I was just about to say, Yale yeah, playing make it, take it. But they came after Erlin and Conrad, one of the best middies in the game, maybe the best midi, makes it 7-4. The importance of ground balls. The winger's scrap, 22 and white, the best in the game. He causes the turnover, the scoop, the sprint, the celebrate. All his skills on display. And look who's at the face-off X for Yale right now. It's the freshman, Joe Newman. A little change-up now for the Elijah. It'll be Schwenk for Virginia. Maybe giving LaSala and Erlin a blow. Newman's been pretty good 70% this year. Schwenk's at 54%. And both locked in a stalemate. Schwenk wins it for Virginia. Then lost it. Newman picks it up. That might have been a push with possession. Virginia may have gotten away with it. Newman fell too late. He was stumbling, kept his feet. If he fell right away, that would have been a push with possession. And that would have been a man-up opportunity for Yale. Instead, no call, Virginia ball. Aiken has the short stick matchup, Oaken. Doc's Aiken, a first-team All-American. More goals and points than any midfielder to play for Virginia. Aiken lowering that left shoulder, now backs up. Dangerous with either hand. Ryan Conrad now a dozen goals in this tournament. Conrad picked up on the switch by Hines. Aiken from the wing. Gets to the middle. Over to Conrad. Back to X. Good look for Cross. A couple of quick ones by Yale. Virginia answers right back. Cart, you said in the car ride over, Michael Krause has to be a goal scorer again. He's got a hat trick. He's been incredible. And Michael Krause, rewind a couple years ago, ACC Rookie of the Year. Last year, dominating performance. This year, a little nicked up. When he's healthy, he's amongst the best in college lacrosse because of his dodging ability and his lefty snipe. Virginia relentless, riding out Joey Newman, the freshman faceoff guy. Well, that gives this offense another opportunity. Matt Moore's been Mr. Assister all season long find the All-American Michael Krause. And with that assist, Matt Moore has 87 points this season.
A new single season points record at Virginia, one better than the great Doug Knight. Erlin and LaSala back at the X. The intensity meter has picked up in this championship game early in the third. And Yale able to salvage this possession despite the errant pass. Or bothered by Connor is able to run away. Or coming around the bend. Sostek has done a nice job staying with 15 in blue. Jackson Moore. While I thought that no call, the push on Newman was not correct. Remember, it is Memorial Day Monday, and they will let these guys play. Kotler from the alley against Connors. Now Tevlin eyes up Jama. Tevlin looking to feed, now rolls inside, plays it back to X. Pass on the doorstep isn't there, Road clamps. Kyle Kolodzi, 16 in white, air traffic control. That was gorgeous triangle offense by Yale. But Kolodzi, the walk-on, who had it not been for Lars Tiffany, would have ended up playing lacrosse at Cal. Coach Tiffany gave him a three-day walk-on trial. Yeah, they weren't sure what they had, and he's turned into a starter from day one as a freshman. They love his lacrosse IQ. Virginia does not have a ton of midfield depth. We're seeing some of it, though, in Jack Simmons, the freshman, who carries for UVA. Simmons. Speedy left. Three of 26 shooting though this season. Sorry, and he's a speedy lefty. This is one of those matchups that needs help with your Yale's defense. When does the slide come now? Moore against the short stick. Moore shoots, scores. The slide never came. And that's a hat trick for Matt Moore. They didn't listen to you, Q. Apparently yelled. Not the academic school it once was. You can see this coming a mile away. And communication in this big venue can be challenging. But but you gotta know that Matt Moore is gonna be able to draw a double team here. Nobody goes. That communication starts in the net and it's gotta be dispersed amongst the defensive players. Kark, our question for Virginia coming into today. They are so reliant on their big five for scoring. Moore, Kraus, Aiken, Laviano, Conrad. We wondered could they get secondary scoring. They have not needed it. Their big five has eight of the nine goals. I was just going to say, like, who wouldn't take that five, right? You talk to any coach in the country, they'll take those big five. But I'll tell you what, it's the plays in the middle of the field and guys like Petey LaSala who are offsetting that. LaSala, his second! Yale had a couple of quick strikes to get it to 6-4, and a 4-0 Virginia blitz has followed. This kid's unbelievable. The last member of the freshman class from a recruiting standpoint has the biggest impact on the biggest game since 2011 for the Virginia Cavaliers. This kid's amazing. Ice in his veins, down the heart of the defense. Count it, Petey. Strong two-handed cradle. It does a great job of looking off the point man. Just, you know, gives him a hint. I may throw it to my left. He doesn't. And then releases it before getting destroyed. Four goals in 339. And now Schwenk comes out for the faceoff for Virginia against Erlen. Yale's won 11 of 16, but two face-off wins have led directly to Virginia goals. And this is what Schwenk is in here to do, just tie up and wear out T.D. Erland. It becomes a scrum, and Eschbach emerges for Yale. 
against this Valkyrian ride of Virginia. And now a flag coming, so Yale will go man up. Eschbach looking to feed the guard debt. And now the penalty. Jama, Eschbach, 50 in blue, has got a bright future, only a sophomore, good shooter, strong on the wings, he plays with a certain intensity, anger, and fire that defines this Bulldog program. Yale one for two with the extra man today. Good look coming here, and that one wide. Off the cross of Kotler, Brandau digs it out. 19 seconds on the man up. Tie on the perimeter. Comes back to tie. Feeds inside, bounce shot, denied. It was Rooney, and now the long outlet. There's Connors, drops the ball. Scooped up by Virginia and Smith. We're now back to even strength, and Virginia. That's the strength of the Cavaliers, the ground balls. Conrad with a chance, unsettled. Conrad cranks, and they blow the whistle. It's going to be offsides, or rather a moving pick. Yale able to clear. Pass to Sessa. Comes to Gaudet instead. Gaudet checked from behind. Pops to Morrill. One more. That shot blocked. Virginia's sticks are everywhere. Active defense. Morrill to Gaudet. He's got two. Gaudet tumbling inside. Hits the deck. No flag. And the road covers it up. This defense moving their feet. Sticks up in the passing lanes. They've accelerated Yale's timing, so to speak, and it's made the Bulldogs uncomfortable. All the close wins have bred confidence for this Cavalier team. 15 and one after starting the season one and two. Their basketball brethren, brethren celebrated a national title in April with a dramatic run through the tournament. Men's lacrosse looking to do the same, but they have sucked the drama out of this game, a six-goal lead on the defending champions. They've been in control throughout. Peel bounces one over the cage. Star out of the cage. That is a shot. And more closest to it. So Virginia ball. And down it is Jack Peel, the sophomore walk-on. And he will be helped off the field. He's seen a lot of playing time late in the season. Coach Tiffany and staff, they break it down every single week. And they look at the analytics at practice. And if, like, the depth chart is not set in each. Nothing is gifted at Virginia anymore. And, and Peel has used that to his advantage to gain playing time. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Aiken on the inverts. Picked up by Weitzel. Big little pick there with Moore. Aiken keeps it. Aiken rolling inside, missing the net. Moore scoops it up. Five to shoot. Moore against Tevlin. Moore shoots and scores with two on the shot clock. Four goals for Matt Moore and Virginia's lead balloons to seven. He's been a takeover artist at big moments in this tournament. 
Virginia playing fast, scrambling. Watch the tail end of the shot. Able to get top side and find net. Philadelphia. You plan on coming here and walking away a champion? You better be tough too. Toughness is, is one of the most important qualities that someone can have. Keep your head down and keep moving forward and keep grinding. It's always do the hard right over the easy wrong. To win a national championship, your team's got to be tough. There's one big connection between the University of Virginia and the city of Philadelphia. That's Thomas Jefferson. He founded the University of Virginia in 1819, but it was in Philadelphia at Independence Hall. Jefferson authored the Declaration of Independence in 1776, spent some time here as Secretary of State and Vice President as well. Look at the Capital One Cup standings. Teams compete for a combined $400,000 scholarship donation from Capital One, the Bison of North Dakota State with a slim lead That's on a Virginia. Squad, Denise. That's a squad. On the men's side, on the women's side, it's Stanford with a comfortable lead on Florida State. And the boys from Fargo. Outstanding FCS football team out there. Seven of the last eight national titles. Yale, the defending champions in lacrosse. They got to 6-4 early in this third quarter. Virginia has responded with a 5-0 run. Erlin wins the faceoff. Yale's got to play a little make it, take it. All season, this Virginia team's been practicing on Five. Sundays. Push left, Corey. Their Five. off day Five. has been right. Monday. Do right, do right. It, is, it appears as if that strategy, Five. the heavy lift on Five. Sunday, is paying off in terms of their cardio, their legs. More of, a football, more of a football calendar. Road was out of the cage. That was a clean check by Greco. You've got to hit the offensive player from straight on. Below the net and above the knees. Most teams, games are on Saturday. Sunday's your off day. You come back Monday. What Virginia has done is game Saturday. They come back Sunday and go super hard the next day. Hug shot! You take Monday off for academics. Yale has not had much success in the six-on-six. Six. Jealous against Harris. Jealous has a stick checked away. And you cannot play without a stick. That's a procedure call. So Virginia ball, 14 turnovers for Yale. You're a young midfield defender. Mark that one. Well-timed double team. Ian Labiano, the hero of the semifinal win against Duke. He scored the game tying and game winning goals. Left side of your screen, when you see the number or the name on the back of a jersey, you see Sawstead stalking, waiting for the turn, waiting for the opportunity. Ambush. Mikey Herring. He'll morph between midfield and attack. At three assists in the semis over to Kraus. Again, a trick for Kraus, and he's got the short stick matchup. Their pick and roll game behind the nets created all sorts of advantageous matchups. That is the formula for the comeback against Duke. There's Moore. Can't handle the pass clean. Shot clock at 12. Conrad up top. Hines to meet him. Conrad will run right by him. Looking to feed. It's knocked away. And now a transition opportunity for Yale. Fake. Stick check from behind. No flag. Loose ball. Wow. Andy Shea's not going to like that. And Virginia gets it back. Wow. Was that a legal trail check? Virginia keeps it. 
They still have 10 seconds to get it over. They do. Here comes Dave Smith. Wow is right, but credit Ian Laviano for the hustle. And when you talk to Lars Tiffany, the first thing he tells you about Ian Laviano is not that he leads the team in goals or how he's in the right spot at the right time in the settled offense. It's his ability to be relentless on the ride and never give up and sell out in moments like that. Right now, the kid is toast. He's at the crease, stick above his head, huffing and puffing, but that possession was huge. Krause, his shot is blocked, and it comes to the sideline. It will stay with Virginia. Again, closest to the ball, where it goes out of bounds, awarded possession. 15 on the shot clock and the whistle. They will adjust the shot clock. 18 on the shot clock. For championship weekend, you can use video replay to adjust the clock. We have Don Zimmerman, our rules expert, with us in the booth. This is one of these situations where the officials can use replay. Right, the officials want to get it right. You can use replay for four instances. One is to readjust that game clock and the shot clock. They're going to readjust both. Good job by the officials. 2.52 on the game clock, 18 on the shot clock. Jeff Connor. His shot is saved by Starr. That resets the shot clock, but Yale has it. Now the ride again by Virginia. Yale able to clear. Oaken. Jackson Moore. He's been quiet today. Yale's leading scorer, now Brandau. Having the best freshman season by any offensive player in school history. Ball dumps it off to Gaudet, who's got a couple of goals. Back to Cutler. He's had a big postseason. Zone, Virginia defense, packing it in. Crop, the sophomore from Florida, against the short stick. Now picked up by Rock, over to Tevlin. Looking up for that skip pass, and Rock knocks it down. He wins the race and shovels it back. Dangerous pass, nearly picked off. Big ground ball here, Gaudet hits the ground hard. And he's hurt. Gaudet is down at the other end. Harris into the box. Shoots wide. And Matt Gaudet, we told you he wears that concussion collar, is shaken up and still down on the far end of the field and now finally able to get up. Tell you, clean. Anytime you hit a man, two hands on your stick. Dave Smith, 5'9 senior from Shawnee High School in New Jersey, captain. We listened to him give the team a speech when they played Syracuse up in the dome. We talked about how this team's grown together, persistence, how you need to protect your teammates, how you need to be truthful. And that that was let's bring coach Zim back in here explain why there was no penalty there coach well it was a clean hit number one and number two a lot of people may say well you got to stop the game however the rule states if the ball is moving down the field and there's a scoring potential as long as that player is not in the, the field of play um, and will no will not get injured more so they're gonna let that play go as soon as that uh, Fast break didn't happen. They blew the whistle and they uh, took care of the player. That's a good job by the officials. That, that, that hit just had just a hair of hands up late after the hit. But I love the way Smith turned his shoulder and used his upper arm and shoulder, not forearm, elbow, or cross checking. Matt Gaudet, one of the best finishers in all of lacrosse. Virginia with the ball as we come up on a minute to play in this third quarter. 
Cavaliers in the midst of a 5-0 run. When you hit somebody in lacrosse, and he's, you're responsible for their health, for their safety. Matt Moore against Will Wren. So that a 16 second differential between game clock and the shot clock. Moore, four goals and an assist today. Last year's ACC Freshman of the Year, he played midfielder a season ago. An attackman this year. Moore spins from goal line extended, fakes the pass, stops on a dime, restarts, shoots, and a save by Starr. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Virginia again, the attackmen love to ride. Laviano, Kraus, Moore. There's Laviano who knocks it loose. Eschbach. Hustles to get it over midfield. Ten seconds to go in the quarter. Eschbach. Over to Rooney. No Gaudet out there for Yale. Brandau. Inside roll. Brandau shoots and scores at the horn. Now this is a reviewable play. For championship weekend, you can review. And I want to bring Coach Zimmerman back in. These are the situations, goals at the end of a quarter when time expires. At the end of a period, you can review that release of the shot at the end of the period. The rest will do that as long as the ball leaves the stick before the clock expires. That's a good shot. And you wonder if this counts, and it looked like watching it real time that it did, is this the type of momentum that can jumpstart Yale into this final quarter? We'll find out. We'll go to the fourth quarter of the national championship. Virginia with a commanding lead on the defending champions. It's the Cavs who've had the comebacks and the rallies all season long. Now we'll see if the champs can do it to UVA. Eleven to five at the start of the fourth quarter. Yale, fifteen minutes. Or I should say, Virginia, fifteen minutes away from winning their first national championship in eight years. Chris Cotter and Paul Carcaterra down here on the field. Clark, I feel like Nigel Tufnell from Spinal Tap. This yeah. these uh, amps go up to eleven as far as the intensity goes. We got 15 minutes. What's Virginia doing so well here? What do they need to keep doing? Dominating the middle of the field. They've been relentless on every single ground ball. The hits, the pressure on the ride. They are playing with their hair on fire. So impressed with the guys in white. Their ability to track down Yale in the clear. And the hitting, too. Such a physical game. Every loose ball, you will see a swarm of white shirts just dogging. The Yale offense in the six on six sets, timing the slides and laying the boom. And he's Shroff, Quint Kesnick, Paul Carcaterra yep. downstairs with Chris Cotter. Fourth quarter of this championship game underway. Yale scored at the buzzer at the end of the third. Matt Brandau to make it 11 5. And Eli's team that had averaged almost 20 goals per game in this tournament. Has been held in check. TD Erland, though, gives them a chance. He wins the faceoff. Erland pranks, shoots, saved by road. What we've seen today, Quint, we rarely see when teams play Yale. Virginia's been the bully. This type of battle right here. Guess who? Clark, how many times have we seen a team be more physical than Yale in a head-to-head -head matchup? Honestly, in the last couple of years, I don't recall. And even in some of these contests where they've lost, in the Penn games, it was just an ultimate slugfest, stalemate-type matchup. But today, it's been Virginia. They are all over Yale. Look at the shirts. More evidence. Brandau devoured. It's going to be a loose ball push. Yale will get it with a new 80-second shot clock. Jackson Morrill 
Second all-time in points at Yale. A descendant of three lacrosse Hall of Famers without a point in this game. Virginia's won the point of attack. An underrated strength of Virginia. It's core of D middies. Jack Ty's shot, that's blocked. And it's Virginia ball, just quicker to the ground ball, swarming on defense. Quicker to the sideline that time. A play that encapsulates this program in this season. ACC semifinal against North Carolina. They were down late, a shot that was saved by Carolina's goalie. Bounced toward the far sideline. And Matt Jama won the race to the ball, won the ground ball. A key play in the Cavaliers' comeback that day. And that play, that willingness to play hard for 60, and that willingness to put the effort play above the gorgeous goal play. To change the personality of this Virginia program. Akin to Leviano, hits the pipe. Rebound to Fink, he swarmed. DeMuth can't scoop it. Out of bounds, back to Virginia with a new 80. Learn to play hard for the full 60. Virginia did that in the dome. Paul talked about it in the open. Tightened up their defense. Man down for Virginia, Mikey Herring. Listen, 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 listen. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. Thank you. I gotta go. I haven't seen you this supply. NCAA coverage continues Thursday on ESPN. It's the Women's College World Series. It all starts at noon Eastern. For more information on all NCAA championships, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. I love how our mics can listen in on the healthy, constructive, positive, and respectful dialogue between referee and player. I think you, you figured out what happened. Aiken against Teblin, who's played a lot of defense today. Aiken shoots and scores! The effort has been first class. You dive to earn possession. You're working hard, not dismayed to ring the iron. And then you give the ball to your star, Dox Aiken. And Yale, once again, mismanages a complete mismatch. I mean, how many times are Virginia big, fast, strong, talented, name Dodgers gonna score unassisted goals? A lot, and when you have Dox Aiken who's been amazing for his entire career, stepping on this stage for the first time. You look at that lacrosse family. Both parents, cousins, mom and dad, very instrumental in terms of the culture of this Virginia program, bringing everyone together, had huge parties in Philadelphia over the weekend for the parents and the families of the Cavaliers. But from a physical standpoint, this guy can shoot with tons of pressure on him. You can pound his bottom hand. He's still gonna let it rip. Dana Jealous down the alley. Shot and score! Brandau, the lightning quick release. It's 12-6, and remember, uh, this is a Yale team that can score in a flurry. We saw it in the first quarter against Penn State. They can, but how much gas do they have left in the tank? Saturday, T.D. Erlen was make it, take it in the first quarter. He'll be tested from a stamina standpoint. If, if the offense gets their opportunities, you know Matt Brandau can make it count. Seven goals against Penn State in the semis. He is always in the right spot at the right time. This guy does it all in attack. And he had four of those seven in the fourth quarter. Penn State had closed to 16-13. Brandau went assist, goal, 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 to essentially put that game away. Yale has won 15 of 20 faceoffs, but Karkit 
feels like those numbers don't tell the whole story. They don't, and a lot of the wins for Yale statistically were in their favor, but Petey LaSalle won at least three to four clamps that the possession went to Yale, tired TD out, made him stand at the X a little bit longer, and that's going to show its course in this fourth quarter with the gas of TD. Yeah, two of those face-off wins for LaSalle turned into goals. Here comes Sessa. Nice move on Smith. Back to Ty, saved by Rose. Smith ducks under the Yale player. Dave Smith, a senior captain, he's seen it all at Virginia. An 18-game ACC losing streak that only ended a season ago. Smith's a juice guy on the sideline, beloved by his teammates. Coach Lars Tiffany has found a role for, he's quite a grinder. As I said earlier, we listened to his senior speech, the last word after practice on a Friday. Talked about sacrifice, effort, how much he'll miss going to practice. A Virginia team that's been checking off boxes since really late last year, and trying to get this program back. For a long time, Virginia was the mainstay at championship weekend. Aiken against Tevlin. He's played most of the game for Virginia. Shot clock at 10. Kraus, Conrad, shoots and scores! They'll wave it off. Virginia was in the crease, but the player was pushed in the crease. Moore was pushed in the crease before the shot, so it's going to belong back to Virginia with a new shot clock. Let's bring in Don Zimmerman, a rules expert. Well, in this situation, even though the, the push was on the defensive team, whenever an offensive player steps in the crease, the referees blow the whistle immediately. Tough break for the Wahoos. Now, something Lars Tiffany told us yesterday when he was talking about his dad. He said when he would watch any game with his dad, his dad was, would always remark when a team had a big lead, how come they let off the gas? How come they let the other team back in? I have to imagine that's at the forefront of Lars's mind right now. Six goal lead, 10 minutes to go. Maybe run some clock. I don't see Virginia playing that conservatively. Lars Tiffany's dad, Brad, who passed away in January, an ex-Marine in the 50s, served in Korea on the USS Saipan. Used to load bombs onto the planes. Now Kraus, left hand free, shot was saved by Starr. That was the 40th shot of the game by Virginia. And again, still with a six goal lead, relentless on the ride. Looking for Hines. Greco pops it in the air, now into his cross. And back to Road. Those are killers if you're a Yale fan. Connors. 28 and White as a long pole has 13 career goals. Virginia has had the aura of a team of destiny. Wild comebacks against Syracuse and Brown. And North Carolina in the ACC tournament against Notre Dame in the quarterfinals. They were down by five with less than six minutes to play against Maryland. Ball hits a crossbar. Ruled a goal. That tied the game. They win in overtime. But they put themselves in a spot to capitalize on those breaks. Then against Duke, the Blue Devils had the ball with 85 seconds to go. They turn it over. Krause's shot saved by Starr. Virginia trailed Duke by two goals with less than a minute to go, but one in double overtime. Dangerous pass, Greco all over Mooney. They come up on eight minutes to go. Kotler stings the top shelf, it's 12-7.
It started with Jack Starr. He's made a couple of big saves here in the fourth quarter. Off the grill. Jackson Morrill, his first point, finding Kotler. Yale down five and even eight minutes left. Toughness is, is one of the most important qualities that someone can have. Keep your head down and keep moving forward and keep grinding. Having no fear. To always do the hard right over the easy wrong. To win a national championship, your team's got to be tough. Well, let's take a look at our game track brought to you by Buick. Matt Moore, the standout sophomore from Virginia, four goals and the helper. Alex Rode, 31 saves during championship weekend, 17 turnovers have derailed Yale. They'll try to come back, and Kark, it's a five-goal game right now. Virginia was down by the same exact score, 12-7, with less than six minutes in the quarterfinal round. When you look at this, though, Anish, this Yale team has not had to come from behind too often. They've made games interesting having big leads, so this is uncharted territory for this team. Let's see if T.D. Erland can bring Yale back. He wins the faceoff. Yale has won 11 of 12 draws in the second half. Paul Carcaterra down in the field. Quint Kashnick upstairs. In uh, this is your 25th championship game that we're calling to. Still up the same. <laughs> Ryan Teblin against Fox. Teblin spun around. Sessa, quick pass by Gaudetta. Saved by Road. Rebound to Jama. Bouncing off a defender. Looking for Connors. Connors has a trail check from behind. Huge ground ball. These scraps this game have been epic. Fast paced, hard hitting, action packed. They clear for Yale. They get it across. Tevlin, he's got to be tired. He's played offense, defense all day today. Anish, I know you just gave Quint some props, but I want to echo that as well. 25 years calling this championship, man. The sport of lacrosse is better because of you, Q, and we appreciate it. You've been an unbelievable ambassador for this game and love spending it with you. He has been the soundtrack. To lacrosse. He gets on a nerve sometimes. But what he's done for this sport, I, I say this on behalf of a lot of folks who've been in this spot and who've worked with Quint. I don't think you can quantify it. Six minutes to go. Thank you, guys. And thanks to our team. It gets better every year, our team here. Virginia, less than six minutes from a championship. Kraus maneuvering around the crease. Kraus lost it. Hines scoops it. The Cavs need to make, like, one more play, and they win this thing, OK? You're, you're putting yourself in peril if you don't accelerate through the finish line. That helps, because Yale's in a situation where every possession has to be maximized. And the clock is the friend now for Virginia. And if you're Andy Shea of Yale, 10-man ride, press up, you're gonna have to start to press out defensively. Moral riding Sosted. That's a shot. It's coming on goal, it bounces over the goal, but that's gonna be a shot. Wow. Wow. And a shot. I think that's what Virginia's complaint is. We've seen that multiple times this year. That's ruled a shot. Instead, it's Yale ball. And on a shot that goes out of bounds, if you're closest to the ball, that's the team that gets possession. So we're still a lot jar for the Bulldogs of Yale. Five minutes to go in regulation. Morrill met hard by Fox. Morrill stays on his feet. Anna Jealous from the wing. Against Aiken. Gaudet didn't have much of an angle. 
Randall has the backup, 442 to go. You see Coach Tiffany upset. That would be a historical retribution for a Bucknell Virginia playoff game earlier in this decade. Brandau against Greco. Brandau shoots and scores. Yale to within four. And now the faceoff gets magnified with TD Erland. He owned the fourth quarter in the semifinal win against Penn State. Well, it was all about an opportunity that Coach Tiffany was not thrilled about. Was this a shot? Clearly, Virginia is closer to the ball when it goes out of bounds, but the referees call it a pass, not a shot. Tiffany, livid on the other end. You got to play some defense, and you got to do it against the most prolific freshman scorer in Yale lacrosse history. We saw him on the high crease on the last goal with the right hand, this time dodging. Spinning left, making it count. Schwenk and TD Erlin at the faceoff X. That was Yale's eighth goal of the game, 67th of this tournament. A new tournament record, one better than the 2006 undefeated Virginia team. Next play mentality right now, all you're thinking about as a player. And Virginia wins the faceoff. They've got 20 seconds to get it across before that shot clock hits 60. Got to get it across midfield. Conrad and tracks early. Now he's in an ambush. Loose ball. And that's failure to clear. That's going to be Yale ball. It was tight. But Eli's can close to within three. Champs not going away quietly. Moore against Sauston. Moral up top, good look, time, save road! He's been nothing short of sensational this weekend. That may have been the one play they needed. That earns him now 80 seconds. Beautiful offside bouncer, the lefty, left side of your screen. Watch how he moves his feet from pipe to pipe. And a good body rotation behind this. Look at that, that's just textbook. Alex there is Rode. a flag on the field. Did he get a pep talk from Tillman Johnson before championship weekend? Another flag coming on Yale in Virginia. Will have an extra man advantage, maybe two. We sat with Alex yesterday. As quiet as you'll see an athlete. Goalies are different. Alex takes that to a different level. We have two fouls on blue, both on number 11. 11 blue, illegal procedure, 30 seconds. 11 blue plus 30 seconds. One man for one minute, 30 and 30. Both 11. Conrad a little headbutt action there. That's actually a slight break for Yale. They're not losing two. So Virginia will have a one-man advantage essentially for a minute. Consecutive 30-second foul served by Oaken. Virginia will spread the half field. Yale, I would expect to press out. They do. Connors over to Laviano, who brings it in. Virginia playing keep away. They have the extra man. Stahl remains in goal. If you're Virginia right now, even a shot clock violation, I think that's got more value than going back to the faceoff X because that's what Yale wants. A faceoff with Erlin gives you a chance. A four goal Virginia lead. 25 seconds on the extra man. There's 40 seconds plus on the shot clock. Aiken bothered by Weitzel. Yell's got to be careful. You don't want to pick up another flag. Eli's, though, come away with the ball. A turnover. 
Yale still a man down. Brand out. His pass intercepted by Conrad. Who else? Feeding Laviano. Less than two minutes to go. Now more. It was Conrad after the loss to High Point that sat his team down to a captain's meeting. I said, what'd you change, Ryan? Because we changed nothing. We're okay. He told us they knew this team was good all along. They just had to believe it. And following that high point loss, three straight overtime wins. Nothing cardiac for the Cavs today. As Lars Tiffany will call a timeout. They've been in control of this game from pretty much the beginning. They led 6-2 at the half when Yale answered with two quick ones in the third. Virginia responded with a 5-0 run. How good has Ryan Conrad been down the stretch for Virginia? On and off the field, senior class award winner nationally with the steal, the ground ball wins, face-off play, goal scoring. He's got a ton of assists this season as well, and then leadership. You spend time with him, you know he's got a bright future ahead in whatever he decides to do. But he, in my eyes, is the old school two-way midfielder 2.0. Kark, a couple of years ago, you and I were down in Charlottesville. We had breakfast with Lars Tiffany, and we walked away from that conversation thinking, this Virginia program, which has been a Leviathan in the past, is about to be one again. And we even remarked then, you can just see maybe a few of the scales peeking out from the water. And then the head peeks out. Right now, the sea monster is out of the water and for everybody to see. It is. And you look at the potential of this program. It's one of those few schools that, from a recruiting standpoint, you're in the conversation with any player nationally. Now, Dom Starja left the cupboard pretty full. Guys like Doc Aiken and Ryan Conrad, those were his recruits. I thought it would take longer than three years, though, because culturally to change and to have all the schemes offensively and defensively put into play because it was a different kind of lacrosse that they were playing at Brown. Virginia always played fast, but it was a different kind of fast in terms of just using the wings on the faceoff, keeping poles on the field, and the relentless pressure between the two restraining boxes. It's been unreal. January 28th, Lars Tiffany lost his dad, Brad, because of ground conditions. He was only buried last week. Laviano shoots on the open net. The dagger for Virginia, 106 from a championship. about this degree of difficulty. All the big guns had been a part of the scoring act today, except for Laviano, he gets his. Hands up in joy for Lars Tiffany. He's preached culture, building that locker room first. And the results have now transpired and his dad, Brad, watching from above. There has been some magic during this postseason run. That is undeniable. They've come back all season, but the message that Lars shared with us yesterday was something his dad told him when he was little. Swing first. Virginia did that today. They played from ahead. It'll belong to Virginia, and all they have to do is run out the clock. In a season that's been wild and unpredictable, who has been more of a walking tempest than Virginia lacrosse? 
Here comes Ty. In the waning seconds. Moral shot. 20 seconds to go. They're jumping up and down on the Virginia sideline. Our Capital One player of the game, sophomore goalie Alex Rode. Car key embodies Virginia's journey. It was not a smooth path by any means, but this kid has played his best lacrosse here in Philadelphia on championship weekend. 13 saves today, 19 in the semis. Lost his job early in the year when the team was one and two. Regained it. He was pulled at halftime as late as the ACC tournament, but in the ACC championship, stood on his head against Notre Dame, and he's followed that all the way through this NCAA tournament. Loved his mustache yesterday, but you can feel the attitude change when you're an outstanding high school goalie and you get to college, you're expected, expected to be gifted the position. He's had to fight his way onto the field, and it's made him tougher. Awesome weekend today, 13 saves, 62%. 20 seconds to go in this lacrosse season. An incredible NCAA tournament about to come to a close. Rhodes day is done, Patrick Birkinshaw now in goal for Virginia. Final seconds continue to tick away. Yale gets the nine. A muted celebration, the defending champs. A worthy champion. Beat Duke in the final last year. Knocked off Penn State, who most of us thought was the best team in this field when this tournament began. But Virginia has had this team of destiny all up. Yale's become the standard in the Ivy. Penn's raised their game. Cornell's not going away either. Schwenk wins the faceoff. Time expires. A team of destiny indeed.